Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they set it on a lampstand and it gives light to everyone in the house. So we've been doing this series called Parables 2. It's our second round of, um, of looking at parables and talking about <coughs> parables. And there's a few parables that we've already, uh, that we've already talked about uh, in this round. And so I want to jump <coughs> to those and look at those. The first one we talked about was the rich fool. And the question that we were asked was, is he Lord over your life? Then last week we talked about the Pharisee and the tax collector. And, and we talked about it, and we had two questions there, and I wanted to, to touch on both of them. Um, normally, we would have just picked one, but I wanted to, at least this week to touch on both of them. And the questions were this, what do you value over loving your neighbor, and what are you willing to give up for God? What are you willing to give up for him? And, and so those are the questions that we looked at so far, and as we get ready to, to jump into today... Uh, my hope and prayer uh, for those of you in this room and those of you that are watching online was that, is that God would use today to bring some, some release, <laughs> would bring some, some freedom, uh, would bring some, some peace into your life, into the circumstances, into what you are dealing with. Paul Chappelle says this. He says, consider the life you live how do other people perceive your faith? While God doesn't expect you to live in perfection, he desires that you would do all you can to shine forth his light so others will see him clearly. And so today we're going to talk about a parable. It's a very short one, <clears throat> but the parable of the lamp. That's what we're going to look at today. That's what we're going to talk about today. And like we've done, we're going to talk about the story. We're going to talk about the lesson in that story, the lesson that we see in Scripture and then how does this apply to us? The story is a short one. It's not the shortest parables, but it's, it's, it's up there. And it takes place in Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16. Let's read it together. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That's the story. Done. <laughs> Finished. Let's talk about the lesson, though. Let's talk about the lesson there. And, and I have a new, uh, a new verse to add to my list. If you've been keeping a track of, of favorite verses, there's a new one to add to my list. And it's this one. It's Micah 7, 8. And it says this, Rejoice not over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Listen, the Lord is our light no matter the circumstance. 
No matter the circumstance, no matter what you're facing, it could be a physical thing, it could be an emotional thing, it could be a mental thing, it could be a financial thing, it could be a social thing, it could be a marriage thing, a family thing. Whatever you are facing, Jesus is still the light no matter your circumstances. He is not dependent. He is not locked into your circumstances. He is the light. Psalm 119, 105 says this, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It blows my mind because, because and I've done this, and I've rationalized, and I've justified it, and, and I've done this same thing. It blows my mind that, that, that as Christians, we get caught up in all this stuff, all the junk around us. We get into arguments on all kinds of stuff, whatever, and we say, I don't know what to do. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going on. And yet Scripture itself, the Word of God itself, tells us that it's a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Many of us feel lost <laughs> Because we aren't following his map. How many of us are going through our lives with these moments where we're like, I don't know what to do. I, I'm just lost. I've said it. Don't put a show of hands because someone might see you on camera and be like, I recognize that hand. Okay? I'll do it for you. Okay? I have felt lost. Okay? Two days ago, <laughs> I have felt lost. I have had moments in my life where I'm like, God, <laughs> where are you, Lord? <laughs> I'm lost but I have his word, and his word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. If you've ever gone for a walk in the dark, especially if you've ever gone camping or hiking, whatever, and you're out in the dark, and you're going for a walk, and if you don't have a flashlight, you're, you're hoping and praying that the, that the moon is out or that a lot of stars are out. It's not a cloudy day because, you know, no matter how good your eyes get... It's, it's hard to, to walk, especially when the ground isn't even, isn't even. And it's amazing what happens when a flashlight goes on. You walk into a room and the lights are off and you can't find the switch. It's amazing when somebody flips the switch. It's like, oh, wow. I mean, think about it. it, it it's awesome to me when I, when I look at, at little kids, especially, you know, the, 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 the ankle biters we got back there. And I look at them, and, they, and their eyes light up for, for nothing, anything. You're like, look, ooh, ooh, and they're like, oh, like a finger disappeared, ooh, like, and they get, they're amazed by it. And we talk about, as adults, we've, we lose that awe over the crazy thing, a leaf falling to the ground. We lose that awe because we get so consumed with stuff. You want to know where, where, you, where you see people regain awe? When they're tripping through a room in the dark and somebody puts the light on and they're like, oh. And you see this little innocent tidbit of that like awe that, that, that still exists in all of us. When the light goes on, they're like, oh, I can see. <laughs> Thank you so much. Or someone's in the dark and you hand them a flashlight and they're just like, oh, this is great. Why? Because we feel lost when we can't see. We feel, but his word is a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my path. But I got to be using it. I got to be reading it. I got to be in it. I mean, if, I, if you're in the dark and I hand you a flashlight, and you're like, oh, thanks, and put it in your pocket. We would all, if we, if we took a vote, don't, don't vote, but if we took a vote, everybody in this room would probably say that's a really dumb thing to do. You're in the dark and you can't see, and someone hands you a flashlight and you just put it in your pocket. We would all be like, yeah, that's really dumb. You know why we're not taking a vote? <clears throat> because we're walking in a dark world. And God has given us a flashlight, and many of us have put it in our pocket. And now you're drawing the parallel. You're going, oh, I'm dumb. We like sheep. <laughs> John 8, 12 says this. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We have the light. If we have Jesus, we have the light. Why are we walking around life like we're, we're, we're in darkness when we have the light? Back to the story, Matthew 5, 14, he says, you, 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 you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. If we have his light, we become light for others. You're out in the dark, 
and it's dark. Listen, if everybody doesn't have a light, if one person has a flashlight, it's amazing what can happen in a dark world. We have the light from him. We have the light of Christ in us and allows us to be a light to others. Matthew 5, 15 says, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. What do they do with it? They put it on a stand because it lights the entire house. Because it lights the entire house. What's the point of a light if you're not going to turn it on? Now, when you leave the room, make sure you turn it off because that drives certain people crazy. <laughs> Sorry, I had, to, I had to go there because that's me. Lord of mercy. Like money grows on trees in our house. <clears throat> I come home from work. Jen's gone with the kids. I walk in. Every single light is on. Every single room. And I'm just like, I'm like, Lord, I know you said for us to be the light, but my goodness, <laughs> we don't have to be that kind of light. We have a lot of LEDs, so it cuts down on the electric bill, so we're all right. Um, but but yeah, no, hidden light is worthless to those in darkness. Do you understand that? Hidden light is worthless to those in darkness. The people around you, if you know Jesus, you are the light. And the people around you that don't know who Jesus is, it is worthless for you to walk on by them with your, with, with the, with your flashlight in your pocket and just walk on and ignore them. Worthless. A light is worthless. Until you turn it on, until it shines, until the darkness comes face to face with light and the light overcomes it and the light overwhelms it and the light destroys it. A light is worthless if you're going to take it and hide it away. Matthew 5, 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and praise you and worship you because you're an amazing person. That's not what it says. <laughs> Let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and realize how awesome you are and how much better you are than them and give you the respect that you, I deserve that. That's, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Our light should point others to God. Not to me. I mean, th think about it this way. So we're back in these woods again. We've been in the woods a lot today, okay? <laughs> we're back in the woods. It's dark. There's people walking around. I can't see, I can't see, I can't see. They're tripping over things. I got the flashlight. So I finally pull the flashlight out and shine the light. And it's like, I got a light over here. And then I put it over my head. See, I got the light. So now everybody's looking at me. But the problem is, I still can't see where I'm going. <laughs> And I can't lead them anywhere. Why? Because the light's not supposed to be on me. The light's supposed to be on him. When the light's on him, then I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. In the same way, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So let's talk about the application. <clears throat> How do we apply this to us? Since right now none of us are in the woods. <laughs> In, in the dark. How do we apply this to us? John 8, 12 says this. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He is the light of the world. And if you're following him, you don't walk in darkness. You don't walk in darkness. <laughs> you, you, you see this 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 skit in, in, in sometimes in TV shows and things like that and this joke, whatever, where someone, you know, is in water, they fall into water, whatever, off of a dock, off of whatever, and they're like, I'm drowning, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. Everybody's just like, stand up. And the person stands up and realizes it's like knee-high wall, you know? And we've seen that, and we've seen that joke or whatever. Well, guess what we're doing? And what so, too many of us do, and I've done at times, we're walking around in life and we're like, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see. Open your eyes. Oh, 
So many of us are going through our lives and we, we face situations. We get the tough phone call. We, we come home to a difficult situation. The, the, the bills show up and the bank, and we're, uh, uh, and, and, we're, and we're dealing with struggles and we have bad days and we have all this stuff like that. And when those things happen, so many of us, rather than focusing where our eyes should be, so many of us focus on the darkness. Many of us just close our eyes and we just get consumed by the darkness instead of opening your eyes and looking to Jesus Christ. Open your eyes. <laughs> I can't see, Nate. I don't know where to go. Open your eyes. He is the light of the world. Whoever follows him will not walk in darkness. If you're following Jesus and you're in darkness, <laughs> open your eyes. 1 John 1, 5 to 9 says this. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Man, John had given us no wiggle room. He's given us no room. There's no room. Yeah, but well, there's no room here. God is light and there is no darkness in him. And if we say that we follow him, and if we say that we're serving him, and if we say that he is our Lord, but we're walking in darkness, we're lying to ourselves. And we're living a lie. He keeps going, he says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I didn't use this in first service. <clears throat> I'm going to give it to you for free. We haven't said this word in a while. <laughs> Repent. Repent. You can't see? Repent. Okay? <clears throat> you can't see? Repent. The world around you is dark and you're being consumed by darkness, repent. Why? Because if you have the light of Christ in you, then, then, then you need to repent because he will forgive you, he will cleanse you, and you will experience the light once again in your life. Yet so many of us <clears throat> have sinned and disobedience and all this junk that exists within our lives. And because we don't confess, because we don't repent, because we don't battle <laughs> and war and challenge and go against that, we just continue to feed that and feed that, all we've done is embrace darkness within our lives. If you believe in Jesus and you can't see, <clears throat> something's in the way. It might be your own eyelids. It might be your own hand. But something is in the way. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> in the beginning, way, 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 way back when, before any of us, okay, and I'm not going to pick a specific person because then that's going to sound like I'm, <clears throat> you know, making an age joke. So I'm just going to ignore that, okay? Before any of us, it was dark. And Scripture says that God <clears throat> spoke into the world, let there be light. And there was light. And God spoke that light into existence. <laughs> And he spoke creation into existence, and he spoke humanity to existence. But something happened. Something happened, and mankind sinned. <clears throat> and in mankind's sin, darkness entered into our lives. But it didn't stay that way. <clears throat> because God had a plan. And the plan that he had was then to not leave humanity in darkness, but to allow for humanity 
to experience the light of his son, Jesus Christ. And so light entered into the world again through Jesus Christ, and we could experience the light of Christ in our lives because of who he is. As the moon reflects the light of the sun, we are called to reflect the light of Christ to those in darkness. The moon don't light by itself. Okay, science, science you know, lesson here. The moon does not have a light bulb inside of it. It does not light up by itself. The moon reflects the light of the sun. We are called to reflect the light of the sun to those around us. We gave lights to our children. We had them come in early today. We gave lights to our children because the truth is there is no greater place for me to reflect the light that is in me than to, than to, than to my children, to this generation. There is no greater place that our church can invest its energy, invest its love, and invest who we are than to show these kids, whether they're ours or not, show these kids the light of Jesus Christ. And so we hand them a light in hopes and, 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 and in prayer that, that, that we are spiritually handing this generation the light to take out to that dark and dying world. The question, <clears throat> the first question I have for you is this, do you know his light? Do you know his light? Amen. Amen. There you go. <laughs> she answered for all the rest of you. So stay quiet. <clears throat> they can't on the camera. They can't see the sass, but there's a whole lot of sass in my face right now, because <clears throat> because one of them little ones answered for you all. Do you know his light? And if you know his light, your response should be de very different than someone who doesn't. If you don't know his light and you want to, we need to have a conversation when this service is done. <laughs> but if you know his light, I got two words for you. Don't put them up yet. Don't. <clears throat> I got two words for you. Okay? If you know his light, it's very simple. Then shine. Then shine. Then be the light. There's a song that's going to play, and as this song plays, <clears throat> it's a time for us to have some honest reflection. And I'm going to ask you in this time, as this song plays, to ask God this, God, where do I need to be a light? Maybe it's a specific person. Maybe God will put a specific person on your, on your heart. And say, go be a light in this person's life. Maybe it's at your job. Maybe it's at your neighborhood. Maybe it's a community. May what, listen, I, I, I can't make that for you. You need to ask God. While this song is playing, ask God, God, where do I need to be the light? Where do I need to be the light? Let's pray. Father, we come before you right now, God. So grateful, God, for your truth, for your word. Grateful, God, that you are the light, God. Grateful that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, God. Grateful, God, that you don't leave us in the darkness, God, that you don't leave us consumed in the darkness, God. Just like Peter took his eyes off, off, off of you and began to sink because he focused on the waves, God, so many of us will focus on darkness rather than look to your light, God. But today, I pray, God, that your light would come into our lives, God, even those that know you, God, those that don't, we would experience your light in a way that we have never had before, God, that your light would come in and literally illuminate through every aspect of our lives, God. We would see what needs to get cleaned up. We would see what needs to change. We would see what we need to repent from, God, and we would move forward in your light and in your truth, bringing who you are to those around us that are in need. Father, show us in these moments who, who and where, God, you're calling us to be the light. In these next few minutes, God, make it so clear, where am I supposed to take your light? To who am I supposed to take 
your light too. We thank you, God, and we praise you. Amen.